Hi, this is Dr. Charles Parker, and if you're thinking about diagnostic problems with ADHD, you've come to the right place. Here at Course Psych Blog, we talk a lot about these, and I'm currently writing a book called The Patient's Guide to ADHD Medications, What to Do When Nothing is Working. And in a previous video, I talked a little bit about the three subsets, diagnostic subsets, thinking without acting, acting without thinking, and I'm not going to think, I'm not going to act, please shut up and go away. So those three subsets, the acting ADHD, thinking ADHD, and avoiding ADHD are all problems, they're functional diagnostic problems secondary to brain function. And all of those, when we look at the brains of individuals who suffer from ADD, clearly are uh, compromised when we actually look at them and then they have this symptom picture. So that's how we've arrived at these conclusions. They, they got us thinking more about it. And you can see why people are getting the meds wrong because people aren't even thinking about these last two diagnoses. It's sort of like hyperactive, inattentive, and, and combined. And then when you go in to treat it, the targets are really not precise. Targets are not precise. So if we don't know what we're shooting at and we don't have correct targets, and whoever's working with you, your medical team, says the big question, the big amorphous question, um, are the meds working? Well, my point is let's establish some cr clear criteria to see if they're working and precisely how they are working. And I've written a number of articles over at ezinearticles.com, and again, you can go to that from Course Psych blog on the therapeutic window. We'll be talking more about on some on some of these uh, videos. But for right now, one of the points that I'd like to raise for your consideration is the first subset, the first diagnosis of acting without thinking. Now, everybody, not everybody, but many, many people think that acting without thinking, that impulsivity, that hyperactivity is the only ADHD diagnosis. And that if, we're, if the person is suffering from that kind of problem, that's a clear indication for medication. Well, that's really only about 20% of the field. Think about it. How many people do you know who are thinking, thinking, thinking without acting and have been that way for years? And how many people do you know who are avoidant, 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 staying in the house and they look like they have a, either a uh, agoraphobia or they go to the store and they look like they have a claustrophobia, but all they are is in a different reality. So what happens is ADHD is not really a 24-hour diagnosis, seven days a week. It is not that way, folks. And we've been living under that illusion as well. ADHD, you, you heard it first here, is a contextual diagnosis, not a 24-7 diagnosis. What do I mean by contextual diagnosis? It means that it occurs in a context of reality. Well, what is that context? That context is increased variables with decreased structure. Decreased structure, increased variables. Increased variables with decreased structure. And think about that. How does that sound? Does that sound a little bit like the sixth grade, the, the um, freshman year in high school, the freshman year in college? Increased variables, decreased structure, people fall apart? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we think it's either uh, we, we attribute it to something else, hormones, pre-adolescence, um, drinking in school, many of these individuals have all those other uh, aspects that are contributing to the problem, but one of the main problems is they had a quiescent, not obviously seen ADHD problem because the structure was good and the variables were relatively predictable. So let's think about the contextual aspect of diagnosing ADHD and it will make us all a lot more comfortable with, yeah, he can play video games like crazy, but he cannot relate to his friends. Or he can't go to school. Uh, you know. And there are individuals who are not recovering workaholics because they work, 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 because they understand work, but they can't really deal with home, which, again, is increased variables, no disrespect to the home, home crowd, increased variables with decreased structure. Yeah, and it's unpredictable. So ADHD folks love predictability. So tune in more. We'll talk about the three subsets a little bit more in the next video. Thanks for your attention. Have a great day.